Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on this edition of the Inside on Equinox Television. My name is Babila Jonathan. In this edition of the program, we're going to be talking about a recent statement made by the United States Under Secretary of State for African Affairs, Thibaut Nash, who thinks that right now, what Anglophones or Cameroonians from the northwest and southwest regions of the country need is not a reconstruction, but they want to have a say in the management of affairs of those two parts of the country. They want to have a certain degree of autonomy. He thinks that the reconstruction plan of the President of the Republic of Cameroon, spearheaded by the Minister Delegate at the Ministry of Economy, Planning and Regional Development, Paul Tasso and former man John Donatus, cannot work in the present context. We'll be analyzing this in this edition of The Inside. Meet our guest in some few seconds. Our guest today is joining us from the United States of America, Barista Aneneba Innocent Akufo, who was born in Santa in the northwest region of the Republic of Cameroon. He's now an attorney and counselor at law in New York, and he's also a human rights defender and a major proponent of decolonization. Barista, thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much, Mr. Babula. It's a pleasure. All right, we're going to start this edition of The Inside with uh, this extract of a declaration made by the United States Under Secretary of State for African Affairs, Thibault Nash. Take a listen. Anything having to do with Cameroon has to be overlaid with the problem of the conflict that's going on. For example, now the Cameroonian government is talking about a new UN uh, development program for the Northwest and the Southwest. Unfortunately, uh, there, there's just no way to, number one, implement that. And the Cameroonian government seems to forget that the number one desire of the people of the Northwest and the Southwest is to have a say over their own affairs. Uh, it, it's one thing to talk about development, but, uh, but at the heart of it is, is their keen desire to have control over their own lives. And until the Cameroonian government understands that, all these plans are going to come and they're not going to succeed. What do you think about what Thibault Nash said? I think he's saying that from the perspective of an American diplomat, and uh, he's saying that looking at the realities on the ground. But again, I always come back to the basic premise of diplomacy. You know, we cannot, we cannot always try to couch things from the perspective of some person looking things from the outside. You have to come down on the ground and see exactly what it is. And what Mr. Nagy is saying is because he knows what Africa is, he knows what Cameroon is, and he knows exactly what the situation is between the Southern Cameroons and the Republic of Cameroon, what the, the historical perspective of that relationship. And he knows exactly that at some point in the history of these two entities, one was independent and the other was equally independent. They came into a union on the premise that they have to respect certain modality. And that has never been accepted by the other side of this equation. So if Mr. Nagy is saying that we have to look at what is happening in the Northwest region and the Southwest region of this particular entity, this enclave called Cameroon, and which others would differ from it and say, okay, it's called the Southern Cameroons, which is historically, it's a perspective that we have to look into. We cannot brush these sites, we cannot brush these things aside. We have to look into it and look at it squarely and with some sort of foresight, because the longer we push these things under the rug, the more we would get ourselves into situations in which it will be untenable in the future. I absolutely agree with Mr. Nagy. You have to look at what's happening on the other side. They want to have a say in their matters as long as that particular entity, that enclave called Cameroon is concerned. But if you look at it, See, I would have to try to draw you back again a little bit back into history. The legal system in the eastern part of Cameroon, which that's what it was before, it's based on the Napoleonic Code. The other side of the Cameroons was based on common law and 
the fabric of every society, Mr. Badule, is based on the law. It is not about economics, politics, chemistry, and whatever. It is the law because even in all those other facets of life, you have to go through the principles and you have to follow those principles. So if a society is not grounded on a solid legal system, it will be bound to fail. And that's exactly what's happening in this particular situation, which is called Cameroons. So if you look at the English legal system, they tried more than 200 years ago, tried to merge equity and common law. It never worked until at some point Maitland said, these are two entities that will work on two different channels and their waters will never mix and they will still function together. If you take it another way, you know, you can put two different entities together and absolutely respect their individual rights and dignities and they would still function. But what happened with this particular dispensation is because from the get-go, the one wanted to assimilate the other and the other was in good faith thinking that they are going to come into a particular union wherein they were going to be there as equal partners. If the president of the no. Republic at some point, I'm yes, counsel. Right, uh, a barrister, there is um, a government has undertaken a series of measures and uh, uh, th after the major national dialogue, there is a special status that is uh, gradually being uh, implemented by the government in view of granting uh, a certain degree of autonomy to Cameroonians from the northwest and southwest regions of the country. But when uh, Thibault Nash talks about them having their say, what degree, at what degree, because already now, government will tell you they have a, a, a say. The Anglophones have a say in the management of the affairs of uh, those parts of the country. So to what degree will uh, this put an end to the crisis? Look, I always come back to the premise, and I will give you this Latin maxim, itrupe inutil non viveatu, which says you cannot vitiate the useless using the useful. Again, if we keep saying there was a conference, a conference of what? Giving you a special status. A special status from whom? Who is giving whom a special status? We came into a union as, I mean, you people came into a union as two co-equal individuals. Why at some point in that history, that historical development of that dispensation, would someone decide that, okay, I'm giving you a special status? Where did that come from? There was a constitution that was inviolable why did they get to violate that constitution at some point in the historical makeup of that entity or that enclave to get to a point where you decide to say okay this person i'll give you a special status who are you to give these people a special status when they had their status already coming in there this is the fallacy and until we get back to this thing until we get back to the root until Thibaut Nagy himself understands the real perspective or the real history of Cameroon which i think he does with all due respect and that's what he has said. Let these people have the say in their authority. So when you're saying that people should come in or they should look at what they've given them as a special status, I don't consider that as a fait accompli because they, are, they don't have that authority. It has to come from somewhere. If it is the constitution, show me the constitution that's giving them the authority to grant you a special status. It is non-existent because they violated the constitution from the get-go till today. If you bring me any other legal analyst in the, Camo in the other part of Cameroon, the, the French-speaking Cameroon, let's debate this particular issue, where it went wrong. You might have the luminaries, like the Professor Maurice Camto. He draws you back to, to the early part of the First World War or after this, uh, the First World War. He brings those perspectives. Look, the United Nations at some point decided that, okay, they are the authority inside the whole world. I have my disagreements with the, with the United Nations, but you cannot bring it back from that point and say, okay, we were one Cameroon at that point, and you have to impose your status on other people. When they became, in, when, the, when the East Cameroon became independent and signed their cooperation agreement with France, with, uh, based on France Africa cooperation agreement, it was not without, it was without the Southern Cameroons. So at some point you cannot come in and say, okay, you're giving these people a special status when they had their status already, we have to go back 
from where it began. If they want to find a solution of the issue in the southern Cameroon, they have to go back. They have to go back in history and do that. Well, Mr. What degree of autonomy will pull an end to the bloodshed going on in the northwest and southwest regions of the country? And I'm asking this question because uh, some have interpreted the statement of Thibault Nash as uh, to say that uh, independence is what he's talking about or cessation is what he's talking about when he says that Anglophones so or Cameroonians from the northwest and southwest regions should have a say or want to have a say in the management of their affairs. Yeah, Mr. Babila, I do understand Mr. Thibault Naish, and I understand what he is saying, and I fully accept his point of his opinion. And I think he is tilting towards the fact that it's autonomy. But in the end, in the end, it is the people from the eastern part of Cameroon and the southern Cameroon, they have to sit at the table and say, okay, this is what we need sane people who can actually find a functioning government on both sides of this equation if it goes if it is independence absolutely i think that's what it's it, it's going to be i would fully endorse that because look at it this way if you look at two legal systems mr babylon we have always operated on a very huge vacuum which the the the, the per it leads us to failure it's a rabbit hole where we'll go down and we'll eventually get to a failure it's a surplusage so if you write a contract, let's say in Bamenda, and you are shipping your goods from Bamenda to Yaoundé or to Douala or to Garawa, you write under the common law system, you move it over to the other side. What legal system operates at that moment? What binds your goods? If there is a tort activity on the other side, who is going to give the final say in a court of law? Is it the common law system where you wrote the contract? Or is it where the contract is being executed? And so when I see, when I see the, the other part of Cameroon, they're bringing another law, which is the Ohada, I hope I'm calling it rightly, to impose it on the people of the English speaking part of that particular country, the Southern Cameroons, call it the way you want, the Southern Cameroons. It's, it's nauseating, it's egregious because that's not how people are supposed to function. You cannot let people go sit in a parliament somewhere in Paris. They'd negotiate a law and just come and impose it on you and it would work. It would not work. And that's where the beginning of this crisis, the current crisis happened because those same lawyers, those great nines and those trade unionists back in the southern part of Cameroon, they realized it. This is something that you're going to shove it down our throats and we will not accept it because you grew up in a common law system. You, taught every, you were taught everything in that particular system. Why at a certain point in history would the other party with whom you were supposed to come in as co-equal partners decide to show something with the assistance of a foreign power? So for me, if Mr. Thibault Nagy is saying the southern cameroons all the northwest and the southern regions the way you want to call it they want an a say in their future it is long overdue it is long overdue we have to scrap things from the start and begin and go further from there because there are just they're just people that we did not know growing up in that part of cameroon that they are there and we cannot function all those people in that part of that country, they cannot function in the current situation. It has to be brought back to where it began. Then we can go from there. There is the old God. This old God has to be let go. They cannot maintain the status quo because it is so much. It is expensive. It is immoral. It is abusive. And it is contrary to every facet of human rights the way we know it all right barrister we're going to take a look at what the newspapers reported this week The Voice Weekender reports that Cameroon's head of state, Paul Beer, has pushed a magistrate into cessation. Magistrate Chi Buma Valentine was dismissed for abandoning his duties. According to The Horizon, the sacked Anglophone judge now backs separatists. As reported by the Gazette, 
the chief executive officer of Farmer's House, Peter Ngufo, says ceasefires should be imposed in the northwest and southwest regions before reconstruction. Municipal update John Frundi, national chairman of the Social Democratic Front, backs the northwest and southwest reconstruction plan. The Guardian Post reports pressure mounting on the United Nations to freeze accounts of separatist leaders. Another edition of the paper highlights accusations against the international community for reportedly paying lip service over the resolution of the Anglophone crisis. In the major story in this edition of the Guardian Post, the Dweller Port Authority Board extends the duration of the container terminal management by three years after landmark achievements within six months. The Herald Tribune dedicates its top front page to steps being taken by the Ministry of Finance to ensure service delivery at the Yaoundé General Treasury after the fire incident that ravished a section of the institution's building. Barista Aneneba, Tibonash thinks that the people should have their say in the management of their affairs. And this, according to him, is the only way out of the crisis, out of the armed conflict that has been pulling on for close to... Now, the question is how to get there. Well, how to get there, you need to talk to the right people, Mr. Babila. The, whoever is calling that conference, what happened in Yaoundé about a couple of months ago of a national conference, this is a facade. This is pure calumny. This is not how you operate in this particular century. This is post-colonization. And these people sitting up there should not be doing exactly the same thing. You have to put two opposing ideas and still retain the power to function. They cannot. These people cannot. You cannot bring a tribalistic idea to impose on the people you understand so you have to bring the people who matter you cannot bribe people you cannot bribe your way into history you cannot do that you have to look at exactly what the situation is unfortunately what they are doing what they are doing to themselves they are actually shooting themselves on the foot because in the end they would stay where they are they would remain pardon my word primitive in terms of political affiliation or aspiration and that's how they would because that particular country when i was young i went to school the other part of the cameroons and um, it was blossoming but look at it today it is totally it's 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 a mess so if mr nagi is saying let the other people have a say it is absolutely correct that's what it is but you have to talk to the right people you cannot take the people like mr atanganjida he is from the other side of cameroons and you put him at the head of territorial administration and you say he's debating for the anglophone no that is not right you cannot take somebody like the prime minister john Gute, which i respect so much because he taught me when i was in in the Yaoundé university he taught me and i respect him so much but he knows the truth these people know the truth they know that deep inside their heart this is not what Cam the southern cameroonians want they don't want this particular union and if there is a way if there is a way to go beyond trying to forge something that cannot work. I told you, equity and law, which was crafted by the Englishman, decided that, you know what, although we crafted these two legal systems, let's let them work apart, but we still maintain separate channels and we still function. That's what has to happen. At some point, we the same people, the same, the old guard have to be let go, especially on the other part of Cameroon, the French speaking Cameroon. They have to succumb to the part that there is a new generation that's coming up. There is a new way of doing things. Let them sit and watch how things are supposed to be done. Give way. Don't impose. Don't bring those contracts. Don't bring those contracts from the West with cooperation agreements filled with armed uh, agreements to shoot people around. People cannot go safely along the streets. And you decide that this is what people are supposed No, it's not supposed to be that way. Let them move and let the right people come in and talk about peace. If that peace means we should separate, we should separate. And I feel that that's a better option even, so that we maintain two legal systems. We can be good trading partners. We can be good neighbors. We've always been neighbors together. We can do it and we still function as Africans. I think that's how it's supposed to be. Now, Thibault Nash, the United States uh, 
Under Secretary for African Affairs, speaking during the hearing before the Foreign Affairs Committee of the United States House of Representatives, which is one of the chambers of the U.S. Uh, Congress, also said that the reconstruction plan of the President of the Republic, Paul Bier, cannot work, is not feasible in the present context. What's your take on that? Absolutely, Mr. Nagy is right on the point. I respect what he says. Um, let me tell you, the UNDP, United Nations Developmental Program, let me tell you the origin of that particular program. It is after the Second World War, the IMF was created. And besides the IMF, there was something called the African Development Bank, which was coming after that also. And after the, you know, the and that was the genesis of france Africa. so all this united nations development program this is the after the second world war that all these things came into being and if let me tell you if they are coming in that they want to carry on development they are coming at the price tag who pays this price it is you the people on the ground it is your resources, it's your human capital, it is everything that is endowed onto the earth of that, the Cameroons and the Southern Cameroons. It is you people's energy, everything that God gave you that they're using to reconstruct and will benefit. It is the companies that come in to tar the roads. It is the companies that come in to build. You destroy, they come to build and they reap. So Mr. Nagy is absolutely right. This is not the atmosphere. Besides not being the atmosphere, these are not the right people to come in to do this reconstruction because they caused it from the get-go. They caused it. Why come and do it again? Look at the Congo. From the Congo, when I was growing up, when I was young, I knew about wars in the Congo. It's never been fizzled out. Why? Because you have conflicting interests. And who sponsors this? The West. So the United Nations Development Program cannot come in and tell you people that, okay, we're coming to reconstruct. Reconstruct on whose terms? On your terms or the people on the ground? The land but, is your land. The, You're the, supposed to be the people. But the Minister Delegate at the Ministry of Economy, Planning and Regional Development, Paul Tasson, who is spearheading the execution of that uh, plan, says that it is intended to fast track the return to peace and normalcy. And he thinks that if the people accept the reconstruction, the separatists accept the reconstruction, the, there will be a return to peace and normalcy. Mr. Babila, Mr. Mr. Paul Tasson, I don't know him. I know other many people back in the Cameroon. And, um, but he is actually putting, you know, the cart before the horse. One has to pull the other and not the other pulling the other. You cannot go where the bullets are flying you know, guns and ammunition, everything is flying over the air, and you're saying you're trying to do um, a reconstruction before peace. Who is fooling who? Mr. Paul Tasson, look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself that question. Would you move to the BLM when guns are flowing everywhere, when ammunition, I mean, bullets are flying all over the air, and you go there and you put a hole or a shovel on the ground that you want to tilt the road, go through to your, uh, to your village? No, sir, it is not. Then why bring it on your people? When the foreigners, when the foreign powers are there telling you to do it, you come and cajole your friends and your brothers and sisters back on the ground and say, okay, let's do construction or reconstruction before peace. Reconstruction. Where, was, where were these edifices before you coming to reconstruct? At some point, you decided to destroy. You know what? Tell the Cameroonians, the Southern Cameroonians, let these developmental agencies get out. You people are able and capable to rebuild your society. We need freedom. Cameroon needs freedom. They need to let people who have intellect to come back to Cameroon and exercise their free right of citizenship or their inalienable rights of birthship. That's where they were born, to come back to their villages and their turfs and their territories and build and do stuff without the intervention of government because government is the impediment if government has become a tyranny what do people need to do we're going to take some interviews now and we'll be right back in some few minutes in the recent weeks we have witnessed an upsurge in violence occurring in the northwest and southwest Sudan. 
so against the civilian population and this is perpetrated by both the armed service fighters and the military. We issued a report in which we gave a detailed account of an incident which happened in a corner where civilians were extrajudicially executed and another which happened in Benin in the North Washington where a heavily pregnant woman was shot with a grenade and this was done by the military. Before we make this report, we have interviewed eyewitnesses, we have interviewed victims, we have interviewed family members of victims who all narrated what happened, who committed the act and when it happened. These incidents are gross human rights violations, they are human rights abuses, which that is why we keep documenting all these human, gross human rights atrocities committed against the civilian population and we are calling on both parties to find a lasting solution to this crisis so that civilians can return to their normal life and then we can see how we can move ahead. We give a recommendation to the government to carry out an independent investigation and bring perpetrators to justice. I've followed the struggle all along. And I feel really hurt that it's all a blame game now. Foncha Mona didn't do it right. Monzu Ella Tanyangwe didn't do it right. Frundi did not do it right. We are the people who are right. And this is what we want to do. I think that in a struggle and as students of history, when we are moving forward, you have to find out, did Foncha Muna, looking at the situation they found themselves in, did they do anything good that we could copy that one and then move forward? And if they were all wrong and they didn't do anything good, how came it that they moved out of the Lagos House of Assembly as we keep quoting? What is it that motivated them? something came in and uh, they had to move from the Lagos House of Assembly as a group. They all agreed to the Eastern House of Assembly. What is it that pushed them out of the Eastern House of Assembly before they came to form the West Cameroon House of Assembly? They went as a group. But you are here educated and you are open to the world and you cannot bring yourself together, yourselves together. And you have different groups here. Oh, my own boys are here. I have my boys on the field. I have, and all those boys who are calling, they are there dying. And when you cannot find a way out, you tell them, oh, but Frundi did not get out of parliament. He was supposed to get out of parliament. I say, please, for Frundi to form the party, we sat down, discussed, debated, and came out with a program which is sold out to people. They bought this program. And if I find myself at a position where people are telling you, just with guns, get out of parliament, get, we'll teach you a lesson, this and that. It's not teaching a lesson to anybody or to a group of people. It's looking for a way forward. Can we, as Anglophones, who believe that we have a problem, look for solutions? We are in an, in an I've been insulted, I've been cheated, but because of my love for my native land, I still stand firm that we have to look for a way forward. In this phenomenon of ghost, of ghost town, you don't know how much money we lose in this limit for one day when people don't walk. We are hereby calling on all service providers to open their doors on mobbies before the sledgehammer of repression, which we have tried to avoid all this while falls on anyone. We are going to put up monitoring teams to work 24 on 24 to make sure nobody comes back to litter the streets. We expected some amount of money, two billion, if we could not recovered it for reasons beyond our control, for bureaucracy reasons, it didn't work. 
Mkambe to Magba. Mkambe to Magba from Du to Mbo Onso is very horrible. It will be too bad. Even about three days, we don't go for open boat. We have gone to open boat to carry stone to fill the road. Try what I will go fix. Try our best. If they go the stones, then you know they will be okay because we use now one motor. Control too much. When too control, much control. And at the control point, when one says he doesn't have, you will be asked, if it was Amber, would you not have given to them? In some cases, they ask us 15,000 francs CFA and 30,000 francs CFA. So there is no difference between the Amber boys and the military. They were there for us. We left Kambe at about 3 a.m., but we are still on our way. For us to arrive where we are, it was hell. The shoe I bought for 40,000 is totally destroyed. So we're not there. First of all, we have the crisis, which first of all was our first problem. Now we have um, COVID-19, which has also come like a big challenge. Our women, most of our women are carrying out economic activities, which has hampered them. We have a lot of women who are selling in schools, and we had schools that were shut down. The first thing is that we want them to accept the fact that COVID-19 is real. So now we want them to accept, because some women are still thinking that it's a myth, and we want to declare it that it's not a myth, it's real. Let them accept it, follow the measures that have been put in place. Place, but make sure that they carry out other activities that can help them empower themselves. If you think COVID is bad, you can also think of what we were going through before COVID came. That's why I say I applaud the women in general, but the women from the southwest and northwest region in particular for their resilience. We thank God. Uh, we have prayer for our country and for everybody. Now we know we are in uh, some situation which is not uh, allowed us uh, to do some uh, work, I mean uh, some business. Coronavirus is doing bad for everywhere. If you remember, nothing is moving now. Everybody is crying. See, we have prayer in the mosque and to ask Allah to remove uh, this sick. This is doing bad for everybody. We have uh, made our prayers just to ask the Almighty God to alleviate this uh, disease within our uh, society. And um, I want to uh, salute the, the, the spirit of uh, uh, fighting of the population of uh, Adamawa. The summit uh, started at 10 o'clock and uh, ended at 5 p.m., just ended. So we worked for seven hours. A number of very important decisions were taken. A number of uh, instruments have been adopted by the heads of states. And in particular, the putting in place of the new commission headed by a chairperson, a deputy chairperson, and uh, five other commissioners. Uh, it is my uh, pleasure to inform the public that um, a Cameroonian, a lady, was uh, elected as one of the commissioners in charge of uh, infrastructure. So it's a, a very important uh, summit. There is a new system of uh, rotation of the chairperson, and the next chairperson would be the Republic of Congo. And uh, thereafter, it will continue alphabetically. Uh, we had very important discussions, and uh, we think that uh, henceforth, the ACAS integration would be carried on full swing because all the instruments have been laid out for veritable integration. My brother has been sick. He has not been fine. On, off, on, off. He'll be fine today. Tomorrow is not fine. But yesterday, the situation became worse. 
the condition become complicated and uh, he died today at uh, midday. We even heard that some media announced his death before in the night, but it was not true. He died with today at uh, midday. It is a big loss to the family. He was a brother who was so sympathetic and loving. We regret the loss. I don't stay here with him. I go and I come from time to time. The children just called me yesterday that the situation is becoming more and more complicated. I even passed the night here with him, trying to like encourage him, pray with him. But it happened that he died. It is unfortunate. The last moment of that, it was very, very difficult. But God's time, what God does is always good, as we say. So God decided to take him and we just have to accept it. Yes, it was very painful, very, very painful. And it's really very painful, but we try to be strong. And by God's grace, we believe that we'll carry on with life and everything will be fine. Daddy was a very good daddy, yes. So he was very strict because when he says this, like when he gives, he gives instructions, you have to follow them. And if you don't follow them, it's really, it's very strict. And at the same time, he was a very good dad. We used to play, make jokes, run around. He was very good and he was very caring, especially when I lost my mom. That's his wife, his late wife. So he was playing the role of both dad and mom. So, which made us feel like, we did not really feel like mom was lost because he was always there. He was always there giving us, always there, like can I say concerned, he was really concerned, yes. Those were interviews of the week. Barista Neneba, Ni John Fundi, national chairman of the Social Democratic Front, thinks that if Cameroonians from the northwest and southwest regions of the country do not come together in a common front, in a united front, looking towards the same direction, they cannot obtain the justice they are fighting for, they cannot obtain the, uh, uh, their rights for which they are fighting. What do you think about that? Well, Mr. Babel, again, Mr. Nijon Frundi is a father. It's somebody I respect so much. And um, at some point in history, in the early 90s, when um, I was a very young person, I had just left school in Yaoundé, and um, we all blossomed because of his leadership. He was courageous. He was... Um, he was somebody who could take on the establishment because guess it or guess it he is the only person who at some point in history actually stood out against the french we all know what transpired i don't have to go back i don't have to revisit history again he stood firm we supported him we did everything yeah let, 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 let's talk let, let, let's focus more on how to go about obtaining yes what uh, the Anglophones, uh, the English-speaking uh, population are fighting for, how to go about it. Right now, we have people uh, fighting uh, for one or two things in, on divided lines, on separate lines. Some are the extremes, some in the middle, some standing on the other side with the own administration. Yes, I understand, Mr. Babi. That's what I was going to that point. I was coming there, and I was saying, we had given Nijon Frundi all the unbridled support for him to take on the, you know, take on the beast. And he was unable because there were powers beyond him and beyond Yaounde that could not let him succeed. I'll give him a pass on that. But the thing is, he has never, he has never seen beyond that point. He thinks that his downfall or it's not the support of the English speaking part of Cameroon. We are, we are. You might have factions in there, but these people are united. The English speaking part of Cameroon, they are united. They have a common purpose in that union or the union that was supposed to be. And that's to maintain their autonomy. You cannot bring things that will infiltrate 
and make them look lesser in that dispensation. And if, if, if you're saying there are factions, there is unity in diversity, I think if you call, if you call a referendum, if you look at, if you take a hundred English speaking Southern Cameroons, I'm, I just hate to put people on the spot, but if you put them on a private ballot, I'm telling you, 99.9 .9 will vote that they don't want to stay with that system. So if you're telling me that, what's the way forward? The way forward is we should look for a way forward that we can actually live separately as an entity. And that's what it's going, I, I think that's a better option because blood will still spill. Because at some point in this particular experiment, they realized that all what the other people wanted to do was to impose on them and show what was not supposed to be down their throats and they cannot even accept it and that's why the war is because mr beer and his government and his people you remember he told people he told you guys in paris that the intent of coming to this union was trying to assimilate you people until you become francophonized it has failed and the only way he can achieve it is through war and that's why he declared war on the southern Cameroons, because soft diplomacy failed the only way is to use the military and the people supporting him, the Western powers, corporations supporting Mr. Bia to do exactly what he is doing. And that's what's happening. That's where the, blood, the, the bloodshed is coming. So if Mr. John Frundi is saying that um, the people of the Northwest and the Southwest region, they don't want to come together to do what exactly, then I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed. Maybe he is not still seeing the, the, the picture, the way it's supposed to be done, to be seen. Thanks for joining us today, Barrister. It was a pleasure, Mr. Babila. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. That's it for this edition of The Insight.